Hi, I'm Dan at VintageVelo.org and today we are going to be out there riding on this Moser made by Ugo de Rosa Sanson team bike ridden by Leonardo Mazzantini in 1980 for the Sanson team in support of Francesco Moser. Now, this is a seriously cool bike. Um, I mentioned straight away built by the legendary builder Ugo de Rosa. Now, there are many, many superb frame builders out there, but really there are three that are true legends of the frame building world. Um, the first, obviously, Ernesto Colnago, uh, second, Dario Pegoretti, third, Ugo de Rosa. Now, it's fair to say Dario Pegoretti slightly different from the other two. Um, he was a prolific builder of frames, loved being on the torch, loved painting as well. De Rosa and Colnago were both in charge of much, much bigger firms. And importantly, they both rose to fame building handmade bikes for the legendary Eddie Merckx. Um, now, um, De Rosa obviously went on uh, and uh, founded his own company, as did Colnago. And um, Ugo De Rosa built the team bikes uh, for uh, the 70s, early 80s period. Um, to be fair, he didn't build the regular De Rosa bikes. They would have been built in-house in the factory. He would have overseen it, but he wasn't on the torch building them. Um, now, when I got hold of this frame uh, as a frame set, it was masquerading uh, as a, um, uh, a Bonotto 3000. Um, clearly, it wasn't a Bonotto 3000. Uh, if you've ever seen a Bonotto 3000, just look at the uh, chain stays. Uh, they're like diamonds. They're very, very obvious. This was not one of those. It had been resprayed in a kind of grey silver fade um, with some Bonotto stickers that were peeling off. Um, it did have a Bonotto headset, sorry, uh, um, stem. So, uh, you know, there were a few uh, things there to make it look like a Bonotto, but on closer inspection, it clearly wasn't. And if you are looking at a genuine De Rosa, especially the team bikes, there are things that you're going to want to look for straight away. Now, De Rosa um, is very individual in the way he builds bikes in that he uses sand cast lugs. He doesn't use proprietary lugs. He makes his own, um, and they are sand cast, lost, lost wax cast um, lugs, but then the tubes then added. And there is online a, um, a sheet where you can look at the individual design and details of the lugs that helps you date the years that De Rosa built them. Uh, and it was very clear this one was built in 1980 or 1979, 1980. Um, and on the underside of the bottom bracket, um, MAZ is clearly stamped. Uh, and MAZ is Maz. Now, Bearing in mind, Ugo only built the team bikes. I got in touch with uh, De Rosa. They got back to me and confirmed it was made by Ugo De Rosa himself, but they had no rider details. Um, but a quick search on the internet and a bit of our research shows the only guy in 1980 riding on a Moser De Rosa or any De Rosa team bike at that point was Leonardo Mazzantini. Uh, Mazzantini being shortened to Maz for this bike. So this is his 1980 Sanson team bike. Um, so um, obviously a little bit of research shows you the colorway. When I looked on the inside of the bottom bracket as well, always a little bit of the original paint in there. I could see it was one of these uh, blue ones, uh, the uh, shiny blue uh, metallic of Moser um, in that period. In that year, in fact, uh, Francesco Moser did quite impressively win uh, Paris-Roubaix uh, on a bike that looks just like this. Um, Columbus SL uh, is the tubing um, and Campagnolo uh, super record six speed uh, throughout everything. Fantastic group set. Uh, up front here, 52, 42 and a, a 13, 26. So a very rideable um, gear set on here. Um, works really, really well. Um, things I should point out. I had a few issues uh, with this setup early on. Um, most notably with the wheels. Nothing to do with the quality of the bike. The bike is superb. It all came down to me and the wheels. Um, I got a bit carried away uh, with some super light um, race wheels that I got hold of um, and they were too light for me. I'm a biggish guy um, and it didn't work. Um, I rode it a few times. I kept breaking spokes. The braking was awful. It didn't feel good. Uh, basically, they were track uh, rims uh, but uh, on uh, road hubs and I had them rebuilt uh, with much better 14 mil um, stainless spokes um, much better ma better Mavic rims uh, still on the same hubs 
and now they are superb. Also, they came with a fairly good set of um, newish um, tubular tyres on there. But on a bike like this, no messing around. I changed on to uh, the, my favourite VeloFlex 25mm tubulars and now it rides superbly. Um, original uh, Concourse saddle there, it's great. Uh, toe clips and straps on the um, Super Record pedals, not my favourite, but it's period correct. Um, so that's how it is. Now, we're gonna get out there and ride. I've gotta be a bit careful today. Huge storm yesterday here, uh, and it's still very, very windy out there, as you probably hear, so I apologize about any sound quality, it's the wind. Um, the storm yesterday, a buddy of mine did go out uh, trying to nab some uh, KOMs, which he did. Um, naughty, naughty, if there's a big storm, don't go out and just grab KOMs, it's really dangerous. I drove in it last night, there were trees falling down. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be riding in something like that. Anyway, um, sun's trying to shine, so let's get out there and ride. So the more observant of you out there may notice uh, that today uh, I have a regular helmet on uh, and I don't have my wool shorts. Now the reason for this is I'm back here in the UK um, and the roads are too busy uh, to not wear a regular cycling helmet and I left my wool shorts in France so the, uh, the motor owner shorts will have to uh, fill in uh, in their place. Uh, now let's talk about this bike. Um, 1980 made by the fair hands of the master craftsman himself, Hugo de Rosa, uh, for the Sonson team. Ready to go on that bit. Nice. It's a full on vintage day today. And there's more. British thing really, uh, a whole load of uh, 1970s uh, Lambretta scooters bombing past you, uh, which is kind of cool uh, for a vintage bike ride. Um, so, um, yes, let's talk about, get back to talking about the De Rosa. Um, now, although it's marked up as Moser, De Rosa, as we know, was building all of the team bikes. Wasn't building the other bikes, but he was personally building the team bikes, uh, which means this should be rather special. Oh, more mopeds. No more vintage mopeds for the moment. We can get back to talking about this Ugo De Rosa made uh, Moser team bike. Uh, now, first off, the rebuilt rims with thicker spokes and Velaflex tyres are fantastic. Uh, my confidence is restored and the bike feels so much better for me. Um, also of note, uh, I had problems on the original setup uh, with the uh, six speed super record rear derailleur. Um, I thought it was the hanger that was bent. I checked the alignments, no, that was fine. Turns out it was the uh, jockey wheel cage was bent. I think it happened in transit. Uh, so a bit of tweaking and playing around with that. It's now absolutely spot on. Uh, and uh, yeah, to be fair, the Campagnolo Super Record on here is fantastic. Uh, it's a really, really good setup. Um, nailed down on this bike. And to be fair, this bike frame deserves the best without a doubt. Now. Um, I'll be straight up honest, is this as smooth as other contemporary steel frame bikes? Now, I'm gonna go straight to the top drawer here. Uh, the last year we rode my friend, uh, Cole Nargo. That was an excellent bike. That was definitely smoother than this. And a Bianchi TSX, uh, haven't done a video on that one yet, but we will. Uh, and that is probably the pinnacle of super buttery smooth rides. Uh, this is not like that. Uh, it's very comfortable, but it's got a bit more of an edge. Um, it's a bit more like the uh, uh, Shawnee 8 711 team bike we rode last year. Uh, it's got a bit more 
urgent surge and kind of brackish fun to it. Uh, it wants you to push on, it wants you to attack, it wants you to get around that corner fast. Uh, it's lively, but in a really good way. Um, also, uh, not to sound like uh, an idiot, the feedback I'm getting from this frame is incredible. It's like when you go back old school and listen to a really good vinyl LP uh, on a really good stereo with a great stylus, you hear everything. It's like that, but you feel everything. Not in a bad way. Not like riding on a flat tire way. Just in a total reassurance, positive feedback. You know everything that's going on on the road. And bearing in mind, this thing's from 1980. Um, so we still haven't got to the era of the 1990s um, geometry, which I think is a bit better. Uh, this is a fantastic bike. And I've got to be honest, in the peloton, I would have been really happy riding this. Okay, so I'm now on a long, slow, draggy climb. And this uh, Moza de Rosa uh, running the, well, the 5226 uh, at the moment. And uh, it's just eating this up. Uh, so it gives me a chance to talk to you uh, about the, uh, the career of professional cyclist Leonardo Mazzantini. Uh, he was a, 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 a domestic, a domestic uh, to uh, several key riders, most notably Francesco Moza. Uh, and uh, Mazzantini, in his own right, was an excellent time trialist and rouleur. Um, his job, get on the front of the peloton, drag everyone along. Not a lot of glory in it, but a lot of glory for Francesco Moza. Um, I mean, Mazzantini on the year 1980 of this bike, uh, I mean, he did six of uh, Giro d'Italia's. And uh, in the 1980 Giro d'Italia stage one, uh, he came second in a head-up sprint to Beppe Cerrone. Uh, so, you know, the guy's no slouch. He's got a pretty good Palmares. Uh, there's plenty of uh, Italian wins. Obviously being Italian, in a very Italian dominated era on a lot of predominantly Italian teams. He's racing almost solely in Italy, um, but you know, doing great nonetheless. Now, in 1980, yes, he's domestique to Francesco Moser, um, the great Italian flat time trialist and sprinter extraordinaire. And let's not overlook the many hour records that he took. Uh, the guy was a flat racing machine. Um, now, I don't have any actual Francesco Moser owned bikes, uh, given that they command astronomical values. At the moment, one of his hour record bikes currently is going down to auction with a bike now price of 80,000 euros. So a little bit out of most of our leagues, I think I'm just happy enough here to have a genuine team bike from the same time. Um, and of note, um, Francesco Moser, I mean, he was awesome flat stager, awesome time trialist. And uh, he got caught up in one of the most fascinating um, and possibly only recorded example of helicopter doping uh, to uh, happen in the pro peloton that we know of, I'm sure it happened in other times. But in the 1984 Giro d'Italia, uh, Moser was uh, the favorite to win, but he was going head to head with Frenchman Laurent Fignon, who was on top form and would go on to be winning the tour that year. And uh, towards the end of that year's Giro, big time trial, and it was all coming down to that. And uh, uh, I believe I remember rightly, um, uh, Laurent Fignon was slightly ahead. So in the order he went off uh, last and uh, Moser went off second to last. And as he went off, a uh, helicopter, a TV helicopter was filming and basically sat itself between Moser and Fignon on the road. So ergo, 
massively benefiting Francesco Moser with the tail draft and massively hindering Fignol with a headwind. Um, and it's fair to say Fignon was furious. And if you read his book, uh, which I can't remember the name of it, I'll pop it up on the screen now. Uh, he does refer to that, uh, that moment uh, with quite a lot of uh, anger and guile. But hey, there we go. Francesco Rosa won that year. But anyway, back on with the ride. There we have it, fine ride there on the uh, ex Sanson uh, Mosa de Rosa, uh, written by uh, Leonardo Mazzantini in 1980. Um, it's a great ride. It weighs in at uh, just under 10 kilos, so you're about 20 and a half pounds, something around there. Um, very, very similar in weight to the Carrera Batalan uh, of Guido Bontempi, we rode a few weeks ago. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, do check it out. Um, now, you can compare that directly to its contemporaries like the Carrera Batalan, uh, like the um, Colnago Super we rode last year. And um, whilst both the Batalan and the Colnago Super are slightly smoother and perhaps a little bit more comfy to ride, they don't have what that's got. Um, which is, it's hard to describe, hard to nail but it's just got a certain feel, a wiriness to it, a liveliness, like it's, uh, it kind of feels electric, like it just wants to go. Um, which for that season, 1980, that's a hard thing to find. You don't normally find it or feel it until you get into those 1990s geometries. Um, so that one there, yeah, it's, uh, it's really got something going on for it. Ugo de Rosa, a real master craftsman there. Um, and overall, the bike, fantastic. Concourse saddle, yeah, that worked for me. Only thing I don't like is the Bonotto bar tape. I've never been a fan of that stuff. Horrible, slippery, naff stuff. But it is period correct, um, and uh, that's just what you have to go with. Anyway, there we go. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, do like and subscribe uh, for anything that's cool to do with vintage bikes and rides. Thanks a lot.